the fourth. Bill, it's great to have you on, and, and certainly we'll, we'll get your take on uh, legacy financial assets uh, in your portfolio. But as an owner and believer in Bitcoin, what does the, uh, the, the advent of the ETFs mean, if anything, uh, for the fortunes of the asset class? I think it represents an enormous step forward for institutional capital accessing the asset class. But I think there's actually something out there that's already exposed to Bitcoin, which we've owned for quite a while, which is actually better than a Bitcoin ETF, and that is MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy is better than, in my assessment at least, is better than a Bitcoin ETF for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's more liquid. So it's the largest owner of Bitcoin in the world. Not only that, there's no fees attached to it. And so you think about the optionality of owning a new technological asset and being the largest owner of that asset, it provides enormous optionality over the long term. Not only that, you've got a CEO who owns a billion dollars worth of stock, who owns $750 million worth of Bitcoin personally. He's a technologist. He's got 31 patents to his name, so he gets it. So, you know, we can talk about the ETFs, but there's already something that's more liquid uh, out there already, and it's really interesting to, to consider that. Although, well, that's a micro strategy. I mean, it's, it's perhaps more liquid at this point, for sure, but it, its value is also going to deviate from the value of the underlying Bitcoin. Of course, there is also uh, a software business in the public company as well. Absolutely, and that's one of the things that makes it super interesting to me in that if the value deviates from the intrinsic value, so if the underlying, if the price goes above intrinsic value, Michael can sell more shares into the open market and use that cash to buy Bitcoin. That's an enormously value accretive thing to do. If you think about the history of fiat currencies, always debasing themselves, right? And then you've got something whose supply, Bitcoin, is completely independent of the demand for it. That's a very value accretive thing to do is sell something in dollars and buy something in Bitcoin. I guess that's good if you already own the stock, but uh, maybe don't be one of those buyers of a new equity offering at a big premium to intrinsic value if it's just, you know, essentially an arbitrage. Well, selling shares at a, at a uh, premium to intrinsic yeah. value benefits ongoing shareholders, so we right. don't mind that at all. No, I you know, figured, yeah. On the other hand, if, if the value dips well below, right, the, value, the intrinsic value of the software business plus the Bitcoin, you can always mm -hmm. buy back shares. So, yeah. you know, having somebody at the helm of what is effectively a closed-end fund, allocating that capital is enormously uh, value creative longer term. Gotcha. So as somebody who, you know, who looks at individual, you know, equity and, and, and bond opportunities out there with a value orientation, how are you finding the markets right now in terms of whether there's, you know, a rich set of, uh, of opportunities or, or it's picked over after this, this big rally last year? No, I think the backdrop right now is enormously positive for equities if you look at what's going on. At last quarter, one of the things that was really interesting to me is that long-dated government bonds were up double digits. Mm -hmm. Not only were they up double digits, the stock market was also dub up double digits. That's a really interesting combination. Um, historically speaking, at least, when bonds are up double digits, equities are tanking because people are buying safety. In this case, when you see both of those things move up at the same time, it probably suggests the market believes inflation is reined in and very much under control, which is supported by today's uh, uh, PPI numbers coming in a little light. So now the, the bond market, the Fed funds futures market is predicting roughly an 80 percent chance of a cut from the Fed by the end of the first quarter. And that's really interesting. If you think about GDP annualizing at four and a half percent for the past two quarters, mm -hmm. with the Fed looking to cut rates, that hasn't happened in 40 years. So that's an enormously positive backdrop for equity. So we're really bullish on the environment right now.